Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Tom Coleman? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. In 2011, 44-year-old Thomas Coleman lived in Saugerties, New York, which is about two and a half hours north of New York City. He went by the name Tom. He was a physical therapist and married to a hospital administrator named Linda. In December 2010, Linda started having an affair with a dentist named Gilberto Nunes. He went by the name Gil. Linda believed that she was in love with Gil, but she was not willing to leave her husband, Tom. In July of 2011, Gil came up with a plan to be with Linda. He posed as a woman named Samantha and sent Tom text messages which revealed the affair. Gil was trying to get caught in order to break up Tom and Linda. Tom went to Linda and asked her what was going on. Linda, in turn, went to Gil, who said that Tom must have sent those text messages to himself. Not long after this, Gil left a message on Tom's phone saying that he loved both him and his wife, but he did not admit to sending the text messages. Tom really wanted to find out who was behind the messages and considered hiring a private investigator. When Gil found out about this, he once again injected himself into the situation. He told Tom and Linda that he knew a computer expert who worked for the CIA. The agent could figure out who sent the text messages. Gil then offered a man who worked in his office $500 to meet with Tom and Linda and pretend to be an agent with the CIA. The man never met with the couple. As it turns out, Gil confessed to sending the text messages. In an odd twist, Gil, Tom, and Linda became closer than ever. The trio would go to restaurants together. Gil and Tom would send dozens of text messages to each other each day and Tom would babysit as Gil and Linda went on dates together. On November 12, 2011, Linda, Tom, and their children spent a weekend at a casino in Connecticut. On this trip, Linda realized that she loved Tom, and they sent messages to each other over the next few weeks, consistent with the idea that Gil would no longer be part of their relationship. Linda, however, continued to communicate with Gil in a romantic way. It's not clear if she ever told Gil about this change in her attitude toward Tom. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On Monday, November 28, 2011, Gil and Linda had dinner before returning to their respective homes. Linda would later say that she ended the affair during this dinner, but it's not clear if she really did. That evening, Gil and Tom texted each other as they watched a football game on TV. On November 29, Linda learned that Tom had not shown up to work. She decided to go looking for him. Linda knew that, on most mornings, Tom would work out at a Planet Fitness in Kingston, New York. This is about 20 minutes south of where they lived. Linda checked the parking lot and found his vehicle by itself away from the Planet Fitness building. She then discovered that Tom was dead in the driver's seat. Linda immediately called 911. The police arrived on the scene and started investigating. It was determined that Tom had died during the early morning hours that same day, November 29. His body was reclined in the driver's seat, the zipper on his pants was down, and his belt was undone. Tom had not sustained any obvious injuries, there was no damage to the vehicle, and no signs of a struggle. The forensic pathologist who conducted the autopsy initially believed that Tom died from cardiac arrest, because Tom had an enlarged heart, hypertension, and sleep apnea. This determination changed, however, after the toxicology report indicated that Tom had a benzodiazepine in his system called midazolam. This is a powerful sedative used to treat anxiety before surgical procedures. The pathologist determined that Tom died from acute midazolam poisoning. It appeared as though Tom could have been murdered. It didn't take the police too long to discover that Linda had been having an affair with Gil Nunez for 11 months. 
The police checked the hospital where Linda worked, but no midazolam was missing. They decided that Linda was not involved in her husband's death, and they focused all their attention on her lover, Gil. The police came to believe that Gil had laced a cup of coffee with midazolam and gave it to Tom outside the gym during the early morning hours of November 29. The case against Gil wasn't that strong, and it took a while for the police to bring charges. In the meantime, Gil continued to practice as a dentist, and in 2014, he married a singer. In late 2015, Gil was charged with second-degree murder. His trial started in May of 2016. Gilberto Nunez was found not guilty of murder, but he was found guilty of two counts of perjury. One was for having a fake CIA identification card on his computer, and one was for giving Linda a letter purportedly from a CIA agent. Later, Gil ran into some other problems as far as charges. In October 2016, Gil was convicted of insurance fraud, falsifying business records, and grand larceny. All three charges were related to a 2014 fire in a building that he owned. Gil was tried for a third time in November of 2016 and found guilty of offering a false instrument, filing an apparently false sworn statement, and perjury. This was in connection to Gil lying on an application for a pistol permit. Gil was sentenced to two years and eight months to seven years in prison. He was released in 2018 after spending just a year and a half in prison. Now moving to my analysis. Gilberto Nunez was found not guilty of murder, but of course many people believe that he was guilty in reality. Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that Gil was actually guilty of murder, starting with the inculpatory factors. Gil was having an affair with Tom's wife, which gave him a motive to commit murder. Gil was not convicted of murder, but he was convicted of several crimes involving dishonesty. Gil told the police that he did not use midazolam in his practice as a dentist, but the police searched his office and found an emergency kit that contained two vials of the drug. They also found that Gil had searched his computer for the word midazolam. The police found video surveillance, which supports the theory that Gil's white 2010 Nissan Pathfinder was near the Planet Fitness during the early morning hours of November 29. This is the day that Tom died. At about 4.36 a.m., various surveillance cameras captured a white Nissan Pathfinder heading toward Planet Fitness. Right after this, a camera at a Kohl's department store right next to the Planet Fitness captured an SUV pulling into the parking lot. The video was very low resolution. Fifteen minutes after arriving, Tom pulled his vehicle next to the SUV. Twenty-eight minutes later, the SUV pulled away. Tom's vehicle remained in the parking lot. Moments later, a Nissan Pathfinder was once again captured on nearby roads. An expert for the state claimed that the headlight pattern of the SUV captured on video matched Gill's SUV. Both vehicles had an imperfection where the driver's side headlight was pointed more toward the road than the passenger side headlight. Gill engaged in a lot of strange behavior during his relationship with Linda that made him appear highly motivated, reckless, and relentless. For example, Gill offered money to somebody to impersonate a CIA agent. Gill pretended to be a woman named Samantha and sent almost 2,000 text messages in two days in an effort to break up the relationship between Linda and Tom. Gil pretended to be his mother and sent Linda an email asking her to continue the affair. The email said it was God's plan for Linda to be with Gil, and some of the messages that Gil sent to Linda made it look as though he was never going to give up. For example, he wrote, quote, I am not leaving you, not today, not tomorrow, not ever, unquote. Gil deleted text messages on his phone from November 27 to November 29. He had no explanation for why he did this. Gil had performed dental work for Tom and knew his medical history. Therefore, Gil was aware of Tom's medical conditions. The quantity of midazolam in Tom's system was insufficient to kill Tom without the presence of some other condition like sleep apnea. Moving to the exculpatory factors, 
The police did find two vials of midazolam in Gil's office, but the drug was still in the vials, and the vials did not contain Gil's DNA or fingerprints. They were part of an emergency kit that was unopened. Tom had regularly ordered testosterone and had it sent to a P.O. box. Maybe this was part of a pattern where he secretly ordered drugs on his own. Perhaps Tom somehow obtained the midazolam to use recreationally. No physical evidence connects Gill to Tom's vehicle. The state argued that Gill had staged Tom's body to make it look like Tom had been involved in a sexual encounter, like his pants zipper being down and his belt being undone. If Gill did this, why was his DNA not found in Tom's vehicle? Now, the state could have argued that Gill cleaned the vehicle, but other DNA was found in the vehicle, like from Linda and her children. There is no way that Gill cleaned Tom's vehicle in a way where only Gill's DNA was destroyed. The surveillance video for the Planet Fitness parking lot was not clear. Someone met Tom in the parking lot on the morning he died, but it wasn't necessarily Gill. One theory is that Tom met another person there for the purpose of having sex. This is supported by the positioning of his body and the state of his pants, but also by an email that he sent from a dating website at 1.31 a.m. on November 29, 2011. This was about three hours before the meeting in the Planet Fitness parking lot. Furthermore, unknown male DNA was found on the inside of Tom's belt. As far as the fake CIA identification, Gill had this for about a year before he met Linda. The fake ID was part of an erotic role-playing game. Gil Nunez called himself Special Agent Dr. G. I imagine that he was licensed to kill, but not with a firearm, rather by causing people to laugh hysterically at him so much they could not possibly survive. Gil deployed self-deprecating humor homicide as part of his CIA agent duties. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Gil Nunez was actually guilty of murder? I do not think that Gil was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but I do think he was guilty in reality. Gil had a motive. He deleted text messages. His behavior was bizarre. He had access to midazolam, and his vehicle may have been at the scene of Tom's death. The problem for the state is that alternate theories of the crime are plausible. The unknown male DNA on Tom's belt creates reasonable doubt by itself. Moving to the last question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. All three people involved in this case, Gil, Tom, and Linda, were immature and needy. Gil and Linda were so desperate to continue their affair, they somehow persuaded Tom into going along with it. Perhaps Tom had low self-esteem or was involved in casual romantic encounters with other people, therefore was not really concerned about his marriage. The relationship between Gil and Linda was not sophisticated. They were clearly wrapped up in emotions, much like the ones that teenagers would demonstrate. Linda referred to Gil as Stud Muffin and Little Devil. The pair frequently communicated by sending love letters and many text messages. Gil was highly prone to being lost in fantasy, like when he pretended to be with the CIA. The affair sent this tendency to fantasize into overdrive. Gil wanted to be with Linda so badly, he would have done anything to accomplish his goal. He tried to convince Linda to leave Tom by using his covert CIA tactics, but he was not successful. Eventually, Gil came up with a plan to poison Tom. Somehow, perhaps through a faulty investigation, the state could not assemble a clear sequence of events demonstrating how Gil could have perpetrated the crime. The case of Gilberto Nunez could be summarized in this way. A deceitful dentist, dubbed the Little Devil, dabbled in the dubious domain of infidelity and was debilitated by desire. He decided to deal a deadly blow by discreetly deploying a dangerous dose of a drowsy drug into his dear defender's decaf. Despite depositing some documentation of this dastardly deed, the desperado deftly dodged detection. Those are my thoughts on the case of Gilberto Nunes. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.